Oral finasteride has been FDA approved since 1992, and it has been a game changer for countless people. Recently, though, topical finasteride has gained traction as a potential alternative, especially for those concerned about the side effects from the oral form of finasteride. But can a topical treatment truly match the result of the pill? Let's take a look at what the science really says and see if topical finasteride is all it's cracked up to be. Finasteride is well known for reducing DHT levels, the hormone responsible for hair thinning and hair loss in antigenic alopecia. It helps preserve existing hair and can slow down further hair loss, and even in some cases, it can even reverse hair loss. Now, finasteride isn't the only popular treatment for hair loss. There's also minoxidil, which works much different. Instead of targeting DHT, minoxidil stimulates hair growth directly by improving blood flow to the scalp. This difference makes finasteride and minoxidil complementary rather than interchangeable. Both can be beneficial, but each address a unique part of the hair loss process. Why am I talking about minoxidil when this video was supposed to be about finasteride? A lot of the studies we are going to see today is exploring the combination of both of these drugs, hence the short introduction of minoxidil. It's worth noting that all finasteride is FDA approved for hair loss, whereas topical formulations aren't. Still, there's a growing interest in whether topical finasteride could provide similar results with potentially fewer side effects. In recent years, several studies have explored the combination of topical finasteride and topical minoxidil to determine if using them together yields better results than using either alone. In a 2020 study titled A Randomized Double-Blind Control Study of the Efficacy and Safety of Topical Solution of 0.25% finasteride admixed with 3% minoxidil versus 3% minoxidil solution in the treatment of male androgenic alopecia, Researchers found that participants using a combination of the 0.25% finasteride and the 3% minoxidil experienced a hair density increase of approximately 22% over the study period. This is compared to an 11% increase in those using minoxidil alone. Around 90% of patients in the combination treatment group reported a moderate improvement in hair density. However, this doesn't necessarily prove that topical finasteride is as effective as all finasteride. It just shows that they work better together. Topical finasteride isn't entirely new. It's been around since 2013, and there's been an interest in using topical applications of finasteride and also dutasteride, to be honest, to target DHC directly at the scalp, potentially reducing hair loss with fewer systemic side effects some topical finasteride can still be absorbed into the bloodstream, meaning that it may not be entirely free from the systemic side effects that we are looking for. So it raises the question for me whether the DHT reduction in topical finasteride is due solely to scalp level action, or is it particularly because of a systemic absorption? The mechanism isn't fully clear with adds complexity when evaluating its effectiveness compared to the oral finasteride. Hence again, my question, could it be from just some systemic absorption? Hence, the drug is just going systemic anyways. A 2024 review published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology titled Patient Reported Outcomes of Topical Finasteride slash Minoxidil Treatment for Male Androgenic Alopecia assessed various studies on topical finasteride and found that it could serve as an alternative for those concerned about systemic side effects from the oral form. But the review emphasized the need for additional research to confirm these findings and to establish optimal usage protocol since there are none out there. 
across studies, topical finasteride and minoxidil combined generally led to a 20% improvement in hair density compared to the lower results for either treatment when they were used alone. Another 2022 study also highlighted similar conclusions but noted that Long-term data on topical finasteride is also still lacking. A 2022 double-blind study named Efficacy and Safety of Topical Finasteride Spray Solution for Male Androgenic Alopecia, a Phase 3 Randomized Control cl Clinical Trial sorry, examined topical finasteride over six months to assess its potential for reducing DHT with minimal systemic exposure. Results showed a significant increase in hair count of about 15% in the topical finasteride group compared to a 5% increase in the placebo group. Though this efficacy was not quite on par with the oral finasteride, this suggests that while topical finasteride shows promising results, achieving the consistent results seen with oral finasteride is more of a challenge. In summary, while topical finasteride offers an alternative with potentially fewer side effects, oral finasteride remains the golden standard due to its well-established efficacy and reliability and also just the studies from long term. So while it shows promise, the consistent results we see with all finasteroids are harder to achieve with the topical form. But it's not all just sunshine and games with topical finasteride because it does have its side effects and it does come with its own drawbacks compared to the oral form. Applying topical finasteride daily is first of all messy and can leave some residue on the scalp that potentially can cause more irritation than you wouldn't experience with the oral form. Besides that, because finasteride can cause birth defects, you must take special care when going in contact with a woman or if you have a girlfriend or anything like that because it can be detrimental if you're trying to conceive a child. And while systemic side effects are less common, they're not eliminated entirely with topical use. Localized irritation or itching can also occur, as I just mentioned before. And then on the consistency, many people just find it easier to take a pill than remembering to apply a topical solution every day. I personally am one of them. I hate using too many topicals. I'm already using IU584, so why would I even add more to it? Another common argument I've seen for topical finasteride use is a 2014 study that found a 0.25 topical solution reduced DHC similar to a 1 milligram of oral dose after one week. However, the study was super small. It had like 25 participants and it only lasted one week. So it's hardly conclusive. It does suggest that topical finasteride may have some systemic effects, but it does not show that it can replace oral finasteride over long term. It is just way too small. So when you see that study, just remember 25 participants, somewhere like that, and it's one week. Topical finasteride can be useful particularly for those who are concerned or has experienced side effects from the oral form. However, based on these studies and clinical observations we've seen in the studies, oral finasteride remains the more consistent and reliable option for halting hair loss. Topical finasteride might be a second best option, but it is unlikely to fully replace oral finasteride for most people. For those of you who are committed to protecting their hair long term, starting with oral finasteride is likely, honestly, your best bet. If side effects arise, then switching to topical finasteride could be in taking into consideration, but it is not necessarily the magic solution that some of you unfortunately might hope. But if you want to learn about an even stronger pill compared to finasteride, I have a video about its big brother to test right up here and you can check it as soon as this one is done.